In today's news, a new report claims lighting is reinforcing social inequality. A major client says the explosion of new technology is overwhelming. And experts predict skill shortages will slow the adoption of connected lighting. Lux Today is brought to you in association with GUI, and it starts in just a moment, so stick around. Hello and welcome to Lux Today for May 17th. I'm Courtney Ferguson. A new report says lighting is reinforcing social inequality and class differences. Researchers at the London School of Economics say that the way urban spaces are lit underpins the increasing levels of inequality. According to the research, the over-illumination of social housing estates to allow for CCTV surveillance and the prevention of antisocial behavior and crime could mark some spaces out as threatening. In contrast, in upscale neighborhoods, light is used as a design tool to create an aesthetically pleasurable nightscape, which appears valuable, safer, and more inviting. Researcher Mona Sloan explains the findings. If we look at sort of wealthy neighborhoods that have lots of heritage buildings, we see a very warm light coming from the windows spilling onto the street. Sometimes we even have gas lights. The lighting configures the space along sort of the paradigm of heritage about aesthetics, whereas if you look at other kinds of spaces, such as social housing estates, you can see that the lighting or the people who make the lighting configure the space along questions around control and crime prevention. So what we're trying to do with the Roundtables project is to really kick off a conversation to bring this problem of inequalities in lighting to the intention of the people who make decisions about lighting for public spaces, especially in social housing. And each roundtable meeting has a different theme. And one of these themes is making connections, because light can actually contribute to spatial segregation, but it can also open up pathways and links. It can open up and stay through um, highlighting um, connections. Lighting technology is being developed at such a scale and complexity that it's overwhelming for clients. That's the view of a former customer of the lighting industry who was part of a $150 million LED lighting rollout. Simon Walden, formerly part of the lighting team at UK supermarket Sainsbury's, says trying to keep up with new developments and innovations is a full-time job in itself. He says there needs to be much more standardization across platforms before smart lighting technology can take off. But Waldron believes that it won't be led by manufacturers. Ultimately, it will be end users who stipulate which technology becomes embedded within the fixtures across their estates. The complexity of smart lighting systems is also set to create another problem, a major skills shortage. There simply aren't enough knowledgeable people to commission systems such as internet connected lighting or power over ethernet projects. Controls expert Brent Protzman of Lutron believes the answer lies in a major education and training program for contractors. The technology's there, the, the components are there, the information's there, but, but the contractor bases are, are used to installing standard switches on the wall. They're used to wiring topologies that, that you wire to the fixture that you control, that there's, there's not wireless systems, that there's not commissioning steps, and so the, uh, there's a significant amount of education and training in the industry that's, that's needed. Uh, the education and training to the contractor base, education and training to uh, system integrators. So we talk a lot about you know, lighting control and shading control and how these systems talk to each other, uh, the fixture talking to the controls, but the controls also have to talk to the building management system, the building automation system, the security systems. And so we still need education in those areas as well. Uh, I know at this point there's a lot of utility companies or utility groups that are getting involved in contractor training programs to make sure that the, the, the control systems are set up in a way that the energy savings that is fully realized, I know that that's their, their main priority is making sure that they get the energy savings potential that these systems have. So some of that education is beginning, but we, we as an as a, as a industry really need to help reach out to help train and promote the training of these contractors to make sure these systems get installed in a way that gets the maximum functionality. So 
we really do need to address the skill shortages that's going on in, in the installation base. So some of the skill shortages uh, in integration skills, uh, understanding wireless systems, um, uh, even understanding understanding the service that goes along with in, uh, these systems. These systems are not are no longer systems that that are just installed, wired, hardwired permanently, and you walk away from. These systems need to be managed, maintained, and, and need to work throughout the life of the building and adapt throughout the life of the building, ju just like just like the building adapts to the different people and users in the space. So it's really important that that the contractors and installers have the right skills to be able to set up these these uh, systems in a way that gives maximum performance. So we at Lutron are doing, doing as much as we can with training as well. So we have the Lutron Lighting Control Institute, and the Lighting Control Institute brings in hundreds of contractors, designers, specifiers, engineers, and integrators into, into Lutron, into Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, we provide training on systems, uh, not specifically just Lutron systems, but systems in general. How to install the systems, how to, how to explain how the systems work to end users so the end users get the most value out of the systems. Uh, even training for the facility management groups that are going to manage and operate these systems. So, so there's an, a lot of work that's being done, a lot of web-based uh, interactive kind of training programs there as well. So Lutron, uh, Lutron Lighting Control Institute website has a lot of this content as well. And so we're doing the best we can to both internally at Lutron uh, in Pennsylvania, as well as doing some traveling training organizations as well ac across the country and, and across the world. Lux Today was brought to you by GUI, the IoT lighting people. Remember, you can get all the latest lighting news globally, 24 hours a day at luxreview.com. I'm Courtney Ferguson for Lux Today. We'll see you back here at the same time next week.